Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anil Kamath. I am a consultant surgical oncologist here at Helios Cancer Clinic. So today I will be talking to you about neuroendocrine tumors. It's not a very common condition, but it is an important condition because it can mimic so many other conditions. Earlier it was thought to be very, very rare, but as we have investigated further, more and more tumors have been found to be of the neuroendocrine type. So what exactly are these neuroendocrine tumors? Neuroendocrine cells are the cells, as the name suggests, one part of it is the nervous system and the other part is the hormone system or the endocrine system. So these cells form a sort of interaction between the nervous system and the endocrine system. And because of the neural stimulation, there is increased hormone production because of these cells. The neuroendocrine cells are present in many parts of the body and anywhere where these cells are present, we can have a neuroendocrine tumors. These tumors can be found anywhere in the gastrointestinal system, it can be found in the pancreas, it can be found in the lungs, it can be found in other endocrine organs like the adrenal and sometimes in the paraganglioma's. Para, para so these are the various types of neuroendocrine tumors. All neuroendocrine tumors need not be aggressive or cancerous. A certain of them will be very very slow growing and it will take a very long time before symptoms manifest. A few of them can be over secreting. That is they secrete increased hormones and because of the increased secretions of these hormones, the patients will have symptoms of uh, various symptoms like flushing, diarrhea or dizziness and uh, increased urination. So various of these symptoms can be there in those neuroendocrine tumors which secrete hormones. These would account for about 30-40% of the neuroendocrine tumors. The rest of them can be asymptomatic and just like other cancers. So how are neuroendocrine tumors diagnosed? The first step in diagnosing is by doing a scan based on the suspicion. We do a CT scan. We see a tumor which requires a biopsy. Based on the location, either an endoscopic biopsy, an endoscopic ultrasound guided biopsy or a CT guided biopsy may be done. For the pathologist, Neuroendocrine tumors are usually diagnosed by doing special markers or immunohistochemistry on the biopsy tissue. It may also be important to do the hormone levels. Depending on what hormones we think that neuroendocrine tumors are over secreting. Normally we do test hormones like chromogranin and in certain cases other hormones depending on our clinical suspicion. Apart from this, the regular PET scan is not very useful in neuroendocrine tumors. A special type of PET scan, what we call as Dotonoc PET CT, may be required when these type of tumors are suspected. This is because these cells are relatively slow growing and may not be picked up on the regular PET scan. So once the workup is done, to start treatment, we will have to know where the neuroendocrine tumor is located. We will have to see the pathology to see whether it's a low grade type of neuroendocrine tumor or a high grade type of neuroendocrine tumor. Because high grade type of tumors tend to behave more like adenocarcinomas and may have to be treated differently as compared to low grade neuroendocrine tumors. Tumors which are located localized to one area are normally treated surgically. The surgical removal of the tumor will solve the problem and most of the cases the patients will get cured. In certain areas, doing the surgery might be difficult or not possible and in certain other cases, the neuroendocrine tumor might already have metastasized to other areas. Even when it has metastasized, if the metast area of metastasis is possible to excisable, Say there is a neuroendocrine tumor in the intestine and there are just a few one or two liver metastases. Surgery can be done both on the primary and on the metastasis. 
in those cases which are not operable or which are showing signs of increased hormone secretion there are other options the important among them are st sandostatin analogs somatostatin analogs which is basically an injection which is given these injections block the hormone receptors and control the symptoms of hypersecretion they may also to certain degree help in preventing fast multiplication of the cells these are given as injections usually subcutaneously once in one, one month or once in three months chemotherapy has got a very limited role in low grade neuroendocrine tumors but in high grade neuroendocrine tumors there is some role of chemotherapy there are newer drugs like everolimus or parp inhibitors which are used in neuroendocrine tumors broadly neuroendocrine tumors the incidence is increasing we need to be aware as they can mimic the regular carcinomas and we need to properly identify them and treat them appropriately thank you